genetic hair loss and what can we do about it. Now androgenetic alopecia is the most common cause of hair fall and hair thinning. So frequently when I see patients with this condition and I tell them about the diagnosis, they are often alarmed and they ask me, but doctor, if this condition is genetic, can we really do something about it? And can we actually get an improvement? So this is where the patient actually needs to better understand what is androgenetic alopecia, why it happens, and what can be done regarding the condition. So in androgenetic alopecia, there is certainly a genetic component which refers to each patient's individual tendency, susceptibility to get the condition where the hormone acts on the root and causes thinning of the roots. Now, apart from the genetic component, we have the andro component. So andro component refers to the testosterone hormone, which is a male normal hormone. So the testosterone is converted at the root level to dihydrotestosterone under the influence of 5-alpha reductase enzyme. And this DHT then acts on the root and leads to progressive thinning of the root over time. And eventually the root gets permanently destroyed. So this process is a very slow process and it takes months or years for it to go on. So that is why a patient with androgenetic alopecia does not come to the doctor and say, doctors in the past two weeks have gone bald on the top of my head. It is something that they notice over a long period of time. So because we cannot change the genetic structure of an individual, what we do is we act at the culprit molecule, which is causing the damage to the hair. So to control this, there are medications available which decrease the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. We have medicines which decrease the impact of DHT on the roots. We have various other medical options available which help to boost the growth of the hair follicle. So by these various interventions, we can get an improvement in this genetic condition. So androgenetic alopecia can be controlled. We can get reversal to a good amount of improvement over the scalp and increase the hair growth. So when you hear the word genetic, there is no need to be alarmed and we have options to address the issue effectively. Male pattern baldness and how do you know whether you have it or not? Now male pattern baldness is also known as androgenetic alopecia. Androgenetic alopecia is one of the most common cause of hair thinning and there are certain telltale signs that can help one identify whether are they beginning to develop this condition. So in androgenetic alopecia, one can look out for what is the speed of progression of the condition, how much is the hair shedding that is happening, what are the areas getting involved, and by looking at these features, they can probably help identify whether are they developing this problem. So in male pattern baldness, it is something that is a slowly progressive condition. It is not something that you would notice happening in just a matter of weeks. It takes months and years for the condition to develop over time. Apart from that, patients also often notice that the rate of hair fall, when they're taking a shower or when they're grooming their hair, the number of hair that is falling, that has not exponentially increased. However, the volume of hair has drastically decreased. So this is another telltale sign where one points towards male pattern hair loss. Coming to the pattern of distribution, so it is commonly seen that male patients have a recession in the temporal area or on the frontal area where the hairline recedes. Apart from that, sometimes patients also notice that their hairline may be intact. The recession is not happening in the temporal or the frontal side, but they notice that the volume of hair is decreasing in the crown area or the vertex area. So thinning of hair, the depreciation in volume, which is affecting primarily the top side, is another feature that is commonly seen with male pattern hair loss. So patients will notice that the volume at the sides or the back is not getting as hampered or affected as the top area is. So this condition is where male pattern baldness is the most likely diagnosis. And this particularly happens on the top area because the hair roots which are distributed in this region are prone to the effects of the hormone and undergo progressive, slow, gradual damage because of its influence. So looking at these features can help one identify and recognize whether are they developing signs of male pattern baldness and if they are, they should seek the opinion of a dermatologist 
and get better informed as to what can be done about it. Can a patient be suffering from baldness if their parents are not there? Now, when a patient is told that they are suffering from androgenetic alopecia, when they hear the word genetic, they ask, Doctor, but my parents don't have it, so why am I suffering from it? So, there are various factors that play a role. Now, a person's genetic structure is derived from your parents, but the genes run in the family and it is not necessary that it has a direct correlation to your parents' genetic structure. There are over 250 genes that play a role and have an impact on how prone a person would be, at what age the thinning will start, how fast it will progress, till which stage it will progress. So that varies depending upon the permutation and combination of 200 different, 250 different variables. So it is a very complex mechanism. It is not just as simple as if my parents don't have it, then I won't have it. Also, if your grandparents or your maternal, paternal relatives have it, means the genes are in the family. But how is the combination that has come into your genetic makeup is what decides how prone you would be. So it is a very common misconception where patients feel that if their parents don't have it, they are probably devoid of it and they are not going to have it and they are free of male pattern baldness tendencies. So unfortunately, it is not that simple. So therefore, even if your parents are not suffering from the condition, you can still have it. So that is something that you should not rule out as a complete possibility. However, obviously, a more detailed evaluation, assessing the miniaturization, the thinning of hair, all these parameters are important before we can diagnose the condition. So, unfortunately, even if your parents don't have it, you may potentially still have it. Testosterone and its role on hair loss. So does high testosterone cause more loss of hair? Androgenetic alopecia is a condition in which serum testosterone has a very key role to play. The testosterone is converted to DHT which is dihydrotestosterone and then it acts on the root and makes it thin and gradually damages and leads to loss of hair. Serum testosterone has a wide range. Its range varies from 250 to 1000 nanogram per deciliter. Now in patients who have a higher level of serum testosterone, will have a higher conversion to dihydrotestosterone, will have a higher damaging potential on the roots and causing more loss of hair. So serum testosterone and its levels do have a key role to play and they can lead to loss of hair. Usually, there is a range which is so wide because the levels vary from patient to patient. And if someone has a higher level of testosterone, it can certainly lead to more damage. Apart from that, if patients are taking external anabolic steroids, like which is taken in certain instances by some professional athletes or even bodybuilders frequently use it to help pump the muscle mass more adequately and effectively. So these things also have a role to play in increasing the serum testosterone levels. And because of that, it does tend to have more deteriorating effect on the hair bulb. That is why it is commonly seen that when patients are consuming more of these anabolic steroids, they do tend to have an increased incidence of acne, which also has a role to play with increased testosterone levels. And they also have balding, which is more commonly seen. So your serum testosterone is a key hormone which has an important role to play and that is one thing that you should be well aware of. Thank you.